Since my last video, things have really been heating up regarding the Vander Kane situation. We've seen members of the Edmonton Oilers speak on the matter of bringing Kane in, and other potential teams come about that he might be signing with. Similarly to the last video, we're going to touch on the Kane situation while also going over a few other players that could be moved very soon. And with that, here are four initial players who could be suiting up for new teams sooner rather than later. Earlier in the week, Evander Kane yet again made headlines as he decided to file a grievance in response to the San Jose Sharks motion to terminate his contract. While we're waiting for the NHL to do their internal investigation on the matter, we, as spectators, are left to wonder what could be next for the forward. One team that has been at the forefront of the Kane sweepstakes is the Edmonton Oilers. And even though we know that they could sign Kane as a UFA, we also know that, in this situation, Kane has complete control over where he signs. Even though, starting out, there seem to be a slew of teams interested in the controversial character, the list, over time, has shortened. Initially, Vegas, Toronto, Boston, and Tampa were all at one time considering a Vander Kane. One thing we know, according to The Athletic, is that Tampa has passed on Kane, and I'll link the article below for you all to read. With that being said, Pierre Lebrun initially reported that Edmonton, Tampa, and Florida were all in the top three suitors for Kane on Tuesday. With the lightning out of the picture, that leaves Florida and Edmonton. Kane has made it a point that he'd prefer to play in the warmth that the Sunshine State has to offer. And what Florida has also bring potentially is a lengthy run this coming postseason. Knowing that they have the opportunity to add an extra piece in Kane that could provide some extra grit and scoring up front might be something that Bill Zito won't be able to pass up. There have also been developments in the John Klingberg situation as well since we last spoke on it. According to Sportsnet, the defenseman's supposed trade request was taken out of context. Klingberg set the record straight by saying, quote, I don't think it's entirely true. It's not like I've been going out there and asking, I want to get traded now or something like that. It's something that's been going on with the negotiations and stuff like that. I'm not going to lie. It's been a few frustrating years individually, end quote. Even though the technicality of it has been cleared up, Klingberg is still on record saying that he didn't feel appreciated by the organization that once drafted him. So obviously, when word gets out in situations such as these, usually things don't end well. Prior to the supposed request coming about, contract talks had already stalled, as it was pretty apparent that the stars were more concerned about signing up-and-comer Miro Haskinen beforehand. Knowing that he will be probably seeking a deal elsewhere this offseason, if Dallas wants some kind of return, they're going to have to deal a defenseman ahead of the deadline. Having a defenseman of Klingberg's caliber on the market as a rental would be pretty enticing, especially for contenders that are up close to the cap. Knowing fair and well that the Leafs are looking to take that step and win a playoff round this postseason, it's hard not to wonder if Kyle Dubas won't try and land number three. Obviously for Toronto, the right side defensively has been an area that Dubas has has been trying to upgrade. And according to Elliot Friedman, Travis Dermott and Justin Hall have both been made available for the right price. Slotting Klingberg in next to Jake Muzzin, hypothetically, would give the Leafs an extra boost on the back end. Klingberg not only has 52 games of playoff experience under his belt, but also the ability to eat minutes while doing it with poise. Knowing that the market for defensemen in general is likely going to be slim this deadline, with 17 points in his last 28 games played, Klingberg could could be the piece that the Leafs need to move forward. It almost seems, at least for me anyways, that we're talking about Max Domi being on the move every deadline and or off season. From Arizona to Montreal to Columbus, Domi so far has never really found a place to call home. And according to insider Frank Saravelli, the Jackets are looking to trade the forward before he becomes a UFA this off season. Even though Domi hasn't come close since to his 28 goal, 72 point campaign that he had in Montreal, number 16 has been decently productive this season for CBJ. With 16 points in his last 24 games played, Domi would be an ideal addition for a contending team looking to add to their top six. Known as a versatile player, Domi could play center or wing potentially for an interested suitor. While most contending teams wouldn't mind upgrading their forward group, it's all about that three-letter word, fit. 
And one team that definitely comes to mind here is the Boston Bruins. With Tuka Rask now back in the fold for the B, there's one main task at hand to address, that being the trade request submitted by Jake DeBrusque. DeBrusque, who is looking for a change of scenery, could be what Boston sends out for Domi. Either way, Elliot Friedman on his 32 Thoughts podcast echoed the idea that Boston could be the perfect fit for Domi as his contract expires. Since the plethora of goalie signings that happened in the offseason of 2020, we haven't really seen the goalie market heat up to that same extent. Sure, there's some names that have been floating around, such as Marc-Andre Fleury, Alex Korgiev, Anton Dobin, just to name a few. But out of all goalies, the one in my opinion that has the most probability to be moved would be Jonas Corbisalo. Why? Well, for starters, the Jackets pretty much sealed the netminder's fate when they decided to extend Elvis Merce Lincolns at the start of the season. Merce Lincolns, prior to signing, was set to become a UFA this offseason, but instead, it just leaves his goalie partner Corpus Salo left in the pending UFA state. Secondly, most of us can admit that Columbus currently isn't close to being a contender, therefore they won't be looking to hold on to the netminder in hopes of having a solid tandem for the postseason. And lastly, Corpus Salo's numbers, unfortunately this season, have been mediocre at best. With a current .884 save percentage and a 3.79 goals against average, it's looking like being second best in this scenario has taken its toll on the goaltender's confidence. But for teams that are looking for an improvement between the pipes, Corpus Salo could bounce back given a change of scenery. Freddie Anderson, for instance, had an off year last season in Toronto and since moving down to Rally, we've seen a dramatic change in him statistically. This, paired with, again, the fact that the goalie market will be sparse, could prompt teams to inquire about Corpus Salo's services. One team that will definitely be testing the waters for attendees before the deadline will be the Edmonton Oilers. Since the tippet Koskinen rift and folding, followed by Mike Smith being injured yet again in his brief return, Ken Holland is going to be searching for help in the crease. Given that we don't know if Marc-Andre Fleury, who has a full no-move clause, will want to relocate yet again, and if Holland would want to take a gamble on an older, struggling Anton Kadobin, the best choice and bang for his buck might just be with Corpusalo, with a very low risk, affordable, $2.8 million cap hit, number 70 just might be, in the short term at least, the addition that helps propel the team into the postseason. 